Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, an architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at how you can use Cloudinit for virtual machines on Azure. Today we're going to be looking at Cloud Init and how you can use Cloud Init to customize your virtual machines on Azure. Now last time we looked at VM extensions. Now VM extensions are a way to customize virtual machines as well and there are a number of VM extensions that are pre-built for Azure and you can customize those to your liking. Now Cloud Init is similar to a VM extension in that you can customize your virtual machine. However, it is specific to Linux. Cloud Init itself is an open standard, so it isn't restricted to Microsoft Azure. This is not a Microsoft only technology. In fact, it is managed external to Microsoft and Microsoft has adopted it because it is so widely supported outside of the Microsoft ecosystem. In fact, it's widely supported by most all clouds. You can use Cloud Init on on AWS, Google Compute, or on Azure, or you can use it on-premise as well. And what CloudInit is really attempting to do is provide a way to do configuration as code in addition to what you might have with infrastructure as code with something like ARM templates. And what that means is instead of trying to script everything out with a bash script, you can do it declaratively inside of a configuration file that you can then uh, drop onto your virtual machine and then the first time that virtual machine boots it will perform a number of customizations to that virtual machine be it configuring the swap or the disks on the virtual machine installing certain packages and then you can also use it to actually invoke scripts as well now you could do that with scripts you could completely configure the virtual machine by way of scripts but what cloud init does is it attempts to abstract away some of the idiosyncrasies that are related to virtual machines with specific operating systems like red hat or ubuntu or arch and it attempts to give you a way to take a configuration file and apply it to just about any one of those various distros without having to have the specifics of that distro involved in the configuration. Now, there are certain things that you're gonna have to do to virtual machines with specific distros, and CloudInit will allow you to do uh, distro-specific operations. However, the, the idea here is to kind of get you a little bit more abstracted away from doing that and give you a little bit more of a standard approach to managing that. And that's where CloudInit is going to really shine. So it can be used for a little bit more abstraction away from the distro specific stuff and it's also widely supported. So taking those things all into account, it's a very useful tool for configuring virtual machines and getting those customized to your liking for Microsoft Azure or any cloud for that matter. What we're looking at here is an example of a CloudInit script. And what this is is just a YAML file that tells the CloudInit what to do. Now, if you're not familiar with what YAML is, it's basically a markup format that uses indentation to create blocks within the file. And YAML is supposed to be an alternative to something like XML or JSON because it doesn't have a lot of the more complex punctuations that um, XML or JSON has. It's supposed to be easier to read and so on. So it's gained a lot of popularity, especially in projects that are trying to do configuration as code or infrastructure as code, although you will still see a lot of XML and JSON formats out there as well. CloudInit starts with this directive up here. It's really not a directive, it's a comment, but it says cloud-config, and this is just a way of letting the, the user know that what they're looking at is indeed a CloudInit script, and most of them will start with that. Then what I have in the script are blocks that define various things. Now, it would be impossible for me to go through every permutation of the various things that a CloudInit script can do. It really has a number of packages or extensions that come with CloudInit, and that's basically what all of these blocks map onto. And um, so 
packages here is a common one that is used and it's basically telling cloud init to install a list of packages in this case i'm only installing one but if i wanted to install another one i could just do a new line and put dash space and then the name of the package i want to install run command or run cmd is another common one now what I'm doing here in this one is actually telling it to run a shell uh, command and dash E says uh, it's telling it to accept a parameter uh, essentially uh, that is basically a uh, script of some kind that be that a file or some kind of uh, input that's piped into the shell. In any case, what it's pointing to is this star uh, underscore homepage, uh, underscore right homepage, and that's defined up here. Now, right homepage is not a package. In fact, this is a custom block that I defined, and then here I have this uh, ampersand right homepage, which is referenced down here. And then what this is doing is essentially taking this multi-line output, which is denoted by this pipe here, and then replacing right home page with what's in this block here. So this is essentially just writing out a file index.html with some HTML code that says this is a demo cloud init. And uh, this is just basically showing you how you can use cloud init to install Nginx and then you know write a home page for that instance of Nginx. So it's a very basic example, maybe a trivial example, but it does kind of illustrate what cloud init can do. And you can customize this to the nth degree depending on your context. So let's go over to the portal and deploy this. I'm here in the Azure portal now. I'm going to come up here to create resource and then I'm going to uh, select Ubuntu Server 18.04 or you can go through uh, the compute here and then look for it in this list. So it's usually one of the first options you'll find because it's a very popular option on Microsoft Azure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it to a resource group that I've already created here, or you can create a new one. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in the details for my virtual machine. I'm going to call it Blaze. Uh, the rest of these look fine. I'm going to change this to a more modest VM, say maybe a DS1 V2, which is a single core with 3.5 gigs of RAM. And let's go ahead and give it a username and then a password. Now I have the password in. I'm going to open up port 80 on this since I am going to be installing Nginx. And that's what by using port 80 by default. So I need to allow HTTP traffic in. I'm going to use standard HDD for the disk since I don't really need a high performance disk on this VM. Networking, I'm going to take the defaults. Management, I'm going to take the defaults. And then notice here on this advanced tab that I have the ability to use shell extensions, what we looked at last time, or I can paste in here my cloud init script. So I've just essentially taken the uh, script and copied and pasted it into this cloud init box here this text box and then once i have that in there i can go to the next tab for tags and then i can click review and create now it's going to go through a validation process and once that's validated i'm going to click create so i'm going to go ahead and click create and come back when this finishes now that my deployment is done i can go in to my resource which is a virtual machine and I can get the public IP address for it because I deployed Nginx and then I customized the home page for that. So now that I have the IP address copied to the clipboard, I'm going to open up a new tab in my browser and let's take it out of full screen mode. And then I can type in HTTP colon slash slash and paste in that IP address. And if all goes well, I should see that home page I customized with my cloud init script. And there it is. This is a demo for cloud init. So you can see how I was able to customize the the home page for that, but also install a package. So it's a very basic demo for CloudInit, but it kind of gives you the idea of the kinds of things that you could do with CloudInit to customize your Linux virtual machines. To learn more about CloudInit, go to http colon slash slash cloud-init.io and here you can get the documentation and you can learn more about what is supported on CloudInit as well as contribute to the project or be able to add download this to your virtual machine. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with it. And so I would encourage you to visit this website to check it out so you can learn more about Cloud Init. Today we looked at Cloud Init running on Azure and then how you can use that to customize your Linux virtual machines. Next time we're going to look at one of the high availability technologies for virtual machines on Azure called VM Scale Sets. So until next time, thanks for watching Tech on Fire with Blaze. 
If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.